there's there's so much in your in your talk that uh that I wanted to unpack a little bit, but okay. I want to start about the you're talking about the truth and the relentless pursuit of the truth, and I think you alluded to this a little bit, but there I think there's people in Canada and certainly in the United States that feel like the version of the truth that's in the mainstream media does not represent them. That's right. So whether it's in this discussion about elites, and mm -hmm. you know, I freely identify as an elite as by virtue of what I do, uh, where I live, my education, and so on. Um, and so how, as journalists, do we represent the truth of all kinds of different people, um, and not just people who are in our right. segment of society? Yeah, that's the, the bigger truth question, yeah. right? Um, here's, the, um, here's the problem. We often talk about it at, in Toronto. Um, what we tried to do over the years, and back in the day when we had a bigger budget, we were able to do this, and I think other news organizations tried to do the same thing. But you're constantly mixing up the decision makers at the core of your organization, um, bringing people in from different regions of the country, have a different understanding of the way Canadians from different parts of our land feel about the issues. And that worked pretty well, um, as long as we could keep moving people around. And 20, 30 years ago, you could do that. Moving costs weren't as high, housing costs weren't so different as they are from region to region now. It's much harder now. So you end up with a situation where you have the kind of the same people in your Toronto, major Toronto uh, news organization headquarters, and they're not moving. So what do you have? You have people who are growing up in a city that's impacted by the Toronto example, you know, Toronto real estate prices, Toronto school boards, Toronto Transit, and they have kids, you know, go to, go to schools, um, you know, health care, all these different things, and they, they're seeing, either, even if it's just subconsciously, they're seeing everything through a Toronto perspective. And by the time they come to have discussions, editorial discussions in the newsroom, too often those discussions are based on the Toronto experience. The center of the universe. The center of the universe. And the <laughs> assumption that that's the same everywhere, which, of course, it's not. Mm -hmm. you, you're, so you're constantly trying to break yourself out of that mold. And there, you know, there, there are different ways of, of trying to do that. But it was one of the examples, and it's not just in, you know, in, in the states where you know, there was some change to this in the last election, but where it used to be basically Democrats held the cities, Republicans held the country. In Canada, it was, you know, liberals held the cities, conservatives held the, held the, uh, the countryside. And where were all the media organizations? In the cities. Mm -hmm. And so suddenly, you know, the conservatives win and people were sort of taken aback, or the Republicans win and, they, and the news organizations were taken aback as to how that happened and why, had, why hadn't they heard those voices. So the answer seems pretty simple. You've got to get out. You know, you've got to do, about, do more about ensuring that your organization, especially if it's a network national organization, reflects in its discussions these different voices. And whether it's through polling or research, I mean, I'm off polling. I see Ellie Albums here, and I don't want to get into the argument I've had with him for 35 <laughs> years about polling. Same with Waddell. But, you know, I, I can't win on that with those two guys in the room. But but in some way of better sensing what people across the country are feeling about issues to do our, our, our coverage plans. Um, so that's one way of trying to deal with the bigger truth uh, issue. But it is a challenge, and we, kept, we keep being told why we're missing this, and yet we don't seem to be doing anything about it. We go through a little flurry around in post-election times, of trying to fix that, and then we kind of slowly fall back into the same trap. Uh, and I, it, it occurs to me too when I watch CNN <laughs> that, that American news seems to be going even further down the, the road of a bunch of people 
pundits talking to each other about what's um, important in the news. Is there any chance that the national is going down that? <laughs> Look, you know, I, I, I can tell you that in the discussions we've had, I mean, they asked me to, when I finally made up my mind about what I was going to do, was to give them a year. Because they knew this was going to take a while to figure out what they want to do with the program. And to have the kind of discussions and cross-country discussions about this. We brought lots of people in and we went out. And we haven't come to final conclusions yet uh, about what to do. But one of the you know, one of the formats that was thrown out there was, hey, let's not do news, let's do all talk. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that would be disastrous. I mean, I, I get it on news channels, why they do it, but we talk about CNN and MSNBC and Fox, like they have these huge audiences. Fox actually does have a pretty good audience, but CNN's audience isn't huge. It's significant, but it's not huge. Um, but all of those channels survive on a diet at night of talk. It's, you know, bang, 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 you get your left guy, your right woman, and away they go. Um, and that audience that watches at night seems to want that from a news channel. God help us if that's the way we go. I don't, you know, I don't think we will. But there are those voices who argue and, ma and make a, a, a good argument for going that way. But, you know, that we might as well check out of the news business if we're going to do that, you know. Oh, I, you know, you, you take people like, we have some of the best journalists in the world. And I, and I don't just mean the CBCs. You know, I've got some very good friends at CTV as well and at Global. But, you know, when I speak on our own, you, you talk about Adrian Arsenault or Susan Ormston or Nala Ayed, who was here speaking a little while ago. You know, these people are as good as anyone in the world. And it, going that route, they, they wouldn't have a job. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, they've brought us closer to our world, you know, than anyone. They are names that hang on for the older people in the room. They're like the McClears and the Haltons and, and the Schlesingers of their era. They are amazing journalists. And their oxygen is a newscast or extended items on the current affairs section. It's not in people yelling at each other and talk. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask uh, one more question, and then I'm going to take some questions from, from all of you. Um, you mentioned about CNN not having a not having a massive audience, and it makes me think of the Tragically Hip concert. How many people here saw that on, in, the, in the summertime? Everybody saw that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that, that was a, a real, I think, national moment. It was. With per, perhaps the exception of Quebec. I don't think there was a huge viewership there, but anyway. And um, where people came together to watch something. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that happens very often anymore. And yeah. uh, I wonder. Um, how, how do you meet the, the ma challenge of the mandate in the Broadcasting Act to create a shared sense of identity? Shared national experience. Where, where everybody's some watching something different. They're on different platforms. They might yeah. be watching Vice. They might be watching The National. They right. might, you know. Well, to some degree, those days are gone. But they're not totally gone. Ironically, given what I said in my speech, hockey is still does provide that moment. You know, if we end up in a Stanley Cup playoffs with two Canadian teams in the final, which isn't out of the question. Go Habs. Yeah. What? <laughs> you obviously have not been watching Toronto. Um, oh, but I have. No, but if, if yeah. <laughs> but, but if we did end up with, you know, Toronto, Edmonton, or Montreal, Edmonton, this country would go nuts from coast to coast to coast. Everybody. French, English, you name it. And there would be numbers like we usually only see in the Olympic, you know, uh, final. Um, if it's Columbus versus Nashville, not so much. But they're mainly, mainly Canadian kids, so there, there will be an audience, but not, not like that. Um, usually the great national experiences are driven by moments of high tension or crisis. And people gather around the set, and the CBC still does extremely well on, on those kind of days. So there's, there's a pull 
to the public broadcaster on those kind of moments. Um, but on a day-to-day -day basis, in a normal way, it's, it's really uh, tough. You know, I was looking at the numbers the other night for Anne of Green Gables, which was such a huge hit for many years for the CBC and cuts through generations in terms of a story that, that young Canadians have listened to and, and watched over the years. And we did a high-end, heavily produced, heavily financed, co-partnered with Netflix, so there was like real money in it. Um, <laughs> and the, you know, the audience was under a million. Now, that's still very good for the CBC, but I think the hopes had been that it could have been much higher. Uh, but that's probably the old thinking, you know. It, it's hard to get those huge numbers. Um, I know we have a hard time getting huge numbers unless there's been some big event, you know, some big crisis drives people uh, to the set, and we, we do very well. That's not what you're hoping for, <laughs> you yeah. know. But uh, that's that's usually what happens. So I think. The, uh, you know, the shared national experience, the Gord Downey or tragically hip, and, uh, you know, why was it? Was because they thought we were going to see him for the last time. And, you know, and, and they really watched. <laughs> it was yeah, a it was, huge. And there numbers. was a lot of uh, positive, uh, yep. positive feedback to and the it CBC. Was, it was, yeah, you know why? Because we didn't run commercials. And why didn't we run commercials? Was it because we didn't want to run commercials? Eh, no. It's because Gord said, you can have the rights, but no commercials. <laughs>